Okay, well, uh, we have been playing around with, uh, uh, um, technology once again. Uh, why? Uh, because we have a couple of situations that we're trying to blend everything together. First of all, there's the camera, as you see now, looking down on the game table. And as you know, that is the Microsoft Life Cam. The camera that is not on, hence the, uh, the registration bars, uh, is the GoPro in its HDMI capability. We just haven't turned it on. Uh, the other uh, capture you're seeing here is a, a page capture of the turn process. And we are using that because the discipline of having that list it helps us, uh, helps me go through the turn and, and make sure that things are behaving the way they should. And then I'm not forgetting anything. I still forget stuff. I still skip over things. Um, but uh, there's reasons, uh, deliberate reasons and accidental reasons for skipping things. Um, the other issue that we are trying to coordinate is the ability for casting the image that you are seeing now um, to the Android tablet. And for that, we're using AirDroid Cast on the PC and on the Android tablet. And why are we doing that? Because the Android tablet is performing as a second monitor, a dual monitor, a replicated monitor um, behind me. And what that allows me to do is turn around to the game table and still see the monitor and make sure that it's capturing the image that I want to capture. So that is very cool. The other uh, audio video or the other video uh, connectivity issue was something of our own making um, in that uh, there is a, another camera in a remote area uh, hooked up to a remote PC, a laptop, uh, which is the same laptop that we carry to conventions. That uh, also, by the way, a life cam camera, pointing down at the uh, painting station is where we have, uh, well, where we conduct the modeling itself, the model painting and the a voiceover of tutorials and stuff like that about how to make models and paint models. That's happening in a different room of my studio. So we can walk in there uh, that's always on and start recording, building anything we want, any model, so that the uh, it's essentially an instantaneous capture of um, the uh, of, of what's going on, uh, either a painting or modeling or putting on, uh, you know, decals or something of that nature that we want to capture and record uh, at, without too much trouble. And we've got that uh, working with the laptop PC. And uh, once the recording is done there, we can, through sharing uh, in the Windows environment, uh, take that um, without having to swap disks or you know SD chips or anything like that. We're oh, on the network. Uh, we're able to swap uh, or file transfer. And that's uh, one of the things I've uh, wanted to discuss and let you know that's how we roll here. Um, so uh, that is the extent of it. We have the camera that I'm looking at you now, uh, basically the main computer camera, and the camera behind me looking down, and the uh, GoPro camera, which is offline at the moment, all these things uh, we've been trying to connect, and thankfully now uh, we are happy um, that these things are all becoming connected. Um, at some point in the future, and by the way, the interface that you're looking at or we're recording right now is OBS. And um, in OBS, we can at any time add cameras uh, to get uh, other uh, shots. In other words, this big shot you see doesn't always need to be that big. The GoPro uh, offline right now, as you can see, can be is just one example of another camera angle. And we can add as many cameras as the computer resources allow. 
Um, and so at some point in the future, we will have other cameras and be able to do that. Be they other GoPros or just webcams. Uh, obviously, the issue with the webcams is that they're not wireless and they need to have a USB uh, cable uh, plugged into the main computer or whatever computer, by the way, is being used. What do I mean by that? Uh, the remote, uh, much like the remote laptop back in the painting station, the uh, Android tablet can also be used uh, to capture a video and how I can get that video uh, into OBS uh, on the main computer, I'm not so sure I can. But uh, through sharing, uh, I might be able to open up, and that's the interesting thing here, uh, on the tablet, P, on the, on the, P, on the tablet I can uh, use OBS and uh, uh, add a camera to the tablet uh, using an on-the-go uh, USB connector, which allows for the USB signal to be uh, uh, compatible with the Android, and for the most part, it works. And then use that signal, uh, use that video, uh, sharing it um, in reverse to the main PC. See, right now, the main PC is sharing its OBS interface, what you're looking at now, to the tablet. And the tablet's becoming a second monitor. Well, if so, fat so, I can reverse that and have the tablet running OBS as well, uh, shared to the PC, and then open that PC, open that window, that shared window, inside OBS. Hopefully, I haven't tried that yet. That's a neat idea, and we'll see. Because that what was that? What what does that do? It 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 enables a remote webcam uh, to be used. Uh, and that provide instead of having a another webcam with its cable running all the way to the uh, to the main PC uh, and OBS, it can uh, the webcam can be connected to the tablet and through uh, window uh, well AirDroid casting uh, open up inside OBS on the main computer. So interesting stuff. And uh, as we proceed, uh, we'll. Uh, cover more of that and uh, describe uh, how it works. Right now, uh, everything's, thankfully, Thanksgiving of 2023 working quite well, and we're happy. And also, by the way, we're printing the new format of the uh, Hex Command Nova uh, roster sheets. And again, remember, the roster sheets aren't needed to play the game. They just are a reference uh, because the... Uh, post that's applied to the mechs is working out fantastically. It's a lot easier to play when you can mark something on the table. Granted, it's not realistic, but it's a lot easier. The games can be played in less than an hour. And uh, especially on a 4x3 table like this, as you can see, there's not a lot of mechs on the table. And that Jenner, uh, which I haven't, by the way, moved the label uh, at the intersection of the two roads, uh, has completely uh, annihilated by its movement because it's fast. Um, it has annihilated that Valkyrie, and uh, because the initiative was with the uh, the team, was it I called it Blue Tan I think, um, the Blue Tan team uh, had the initiative, and uh, even though the Valkyrie Warhammer were on hold uh, and got that you know hold fire uh, opportunity fire, um, the uh, the Jenner could not be damaged by that. The emphasis from the Valkyrie was on that Marauder. And as you can see, there's a little dice, a die, next to that Marauder, meaning that in turn three coming up, it can't do anything. It's on shutdown. Like we said in the previous episode, a miraculous thing. Uh, somehow it shut down. We don't know. Anyway, so the Valkyrie's gone, uh, and uh, the only thing left is the Warhammer. Obviously, there are reinforcements coming, and we'll so, uh, we'll so, we shall see how that works. So there we are, and uh, we'll do more uh, as we uh, as we move through. Uh, this, is this the end of the turn? I think it is. Um, I'm just thinking now. Actually, uh, the hold fire from the warhammer. We'll have to debate. We'll have to figure that out. He did conduct a hold fire. Does he get to fire again in his activation? We don't know, right? We we do know 
but we don't get, we don't always agree with ourselves that that's the way it should be done. Once you fire, depending on how long the turn is, say the turns are only five seconds or something, six seconds, I don't know, uh, short. Does it get to fire again? Right. This is kind of the old, the old question. And uh, our default answer is yes, because that's the way the rest of the hex command system works. You can, in your activation, you can do what you like. So uh, the option, however, is to say, if you fire uh, in the opportunity phase, unless you have the rate of fire weapon that allows you to fire again, you don't get to fire. So what does that mean? A light weapon can fire twice each time it fires. So it can fire uh, in the non-activation, hold fire, opportunity fire phase at the beginning of whatever turn, and then it can fire again. Uh, but every time it fires, right, it fires twice. So it fires ba-boom, ba-boom. Uh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Every light, for instance, light laser, fires twice every time it fires, boom, boom. And then, in that same turn, when the uh, activation actually happens, it can fire again, boom, boom. That's it. So, it's up to the players. Again, it's another one of those options that says, well, how do you want to do it? Do you want to do it that way? And then let them decide if they want to do it that way. So, there we are. Okay. Um, in many ways, this is interesting. Uh, I mean, in regard to the technology segment that we uh, posted earlier, we've uh, updated our OBS uh, screen. And let me actually just take this and kind of make it a little bit smaller. As you can see, using OBS, you can at will change the size of various shots. So this new uh, shot that we're looking at, the right hand, the bottom right hand corner, this is um, droid cam. And uh, where I, whereas I was considering, hey, you know what? The webcams are cheap. You know why don't we just get another webcam and and uh, and put it in here? I started to think, well, I already have a webcam. It's my Android phone. And using droid cam, I am. Uh, broadcasting it um, my my PC the main PC here and I've taken the size of it and made it overlap our main screen because our main screen isn't really that informative uh, especially as the action has moved away from you know the uh, portion of the screen that the uh, right cam is now covering the bottom right hand corner of the main screen we'll call it um, so we can overlap it and then if something changes then we'll just make it smaller again um, but it's good to see here as a matter of fact when I just did this now uh, you can see that there's a die and that's the symbol for the fact that the the uh, blue tan group it's actually it should be called silver tan uh, because that marauder is a silver color. Uh, the little dice represents that, but if you look in the very bottom corner of the droid cam, uh, bottom right, you'll see that the die is also there. So you don't really actually need um, to show um, that portion of the uh, overhead camera. As a matter of fact, as I do this, you can see that the droid cam is actually adequate to replace that overhead camera view. It should almost be the reverse. Like the overhead camera view should be, you know, in the small in the corner, and the droid cam, well, see, the, here's the thing, the droid cam, because of its angle, uh, oh, I forgot, I have the other uh, camera on too, hello. So, the overhead camera, we can do it like this, because not, you know, nothing's really happening and certain portions of the screen and the overhead camera is actually the one that should be a little less uh, dominant right 
I mean, the, the overhead camera, now, now that it's in the bottom right-hand corner, it gives you an idea of uh, the overhead view. And here, I'll uh, move this to the fore. Uh, this is our HDMI uh, GoPro view that we still haven't activated yet. So that could, you know, this could be moved out of the way. And then this camera could, you know, take its, its rightful place in a nice big spot. But right now, let's just do it like this because we, we want to read this. Uh, reminder and then you might say hey how do you do that uh, you hold the shift key down to stretch so that's an interesting uh, twist isn't it right we don't need to show everything that's on the right hand side of the big screen now of the of the of the main view the main view is actually the droid cam and the overhead view shows the whole thing. So, I mean, this is actually kind of almost a better uh, way of showing it. So, just a little, another uh, uh, technology update from Imagine Image Multimedia. Um, so, as we said, we have, and the other thing I wish I could do is have the cursor um, show up on the video inside OBS. That would also be helpful. I, I don't know if that's ever going to be something that they would do. I hope they would. So our Marauder is stuck uh, coming up to the next turn three. He's a, he's a, he's shut down. And uh, we're going to roll for initiative. So hopefully um, our, our, our uh, Jenner isn't going to be obliterated by the Warhammer. He probably will be. And then we'll be down to one mech each. <laughs> So when the player moved the Jenner into that position, it probably should have considered uh, that Warhammer is going to uh, take retribution on it and maybe not have moved like that just to wipe out the, uh, the crouching uh, Valkyrie because now he is so close to that Warhammer, it's uh, dubious. Uh, his survival is dubious. Um... He does have agility, so that is a bonus, as does the uh, Valkyrie. But the Valkyrie's agility uh, went to zero when, and I need to update the rules. You know, when you crouch, your agility goes to zero. You don't have any agility. But our uh, Jenner uh, cannot crouch. Uh, he's physically not capable of getting lower than he is. Uh, without falling over, uh, you know, however he wants to lower himself down. I don't think it's possible for that kind of a configuration, that kind of a mech to uh, lower itself. So it needs to take uh, into consideration any cover. Well, it's too late now because he's there, and the Marauder is going to be not doing nothing next turn. So that Jenner better hope uh, that they win initiative, and we have to smoke that... Uh, uh we got to smoke that Jenner. I'm sorry. Um, we need to smoke that uh, uh, Valkyrie. And hopefully my smoke has not uh, disappeared. I have a feeling it has. Well, there's some. Let's see if there's any other smoke. I don't, I don't think there is. This is risky. I don't see the smoke in here. Okay, so. And yeah, just to, to be clear, there's a lot of other, a lot of other um, um, scenery and such that could have been put down like bunkers and everything for infantry. And we could have had some other vehicles involved here, and they may actually show up, but not right now. All right, so that's our uh, that's the end of the turn coming up on turn three. On a Mexican oh, oh, radio, radio, radio. Um, okay, we're back. Uh, being a little silly, we are ensuring. Let's make sure that all our cameras are yay. Okay, everything's going. Uh, big camera, the big view is the. Um, droid cam 
and actually, whoops, uh, it has moved a little bit, and we've lost our uh, Warhammer up in the distance there. Radio. There he is. Okay, so we're going to go for initiative, and we've smoked our uh, um, Valkyrie. This is rolling for the remaining Warhammer team, four, and um, silver, tan, blue tan, two. So <clears throat> there's the bad thing. Um, the Warhammer now has initiative, uh, and this cannot be good. So... Um, Without further ado, um, mark orders, right? Okay, so we're going to mark our war... Oops. Yeah, that camera's not being used anyway. We're going to mark the Warhammer as uh, uh, not moving. And as we said, this is shut down. <clears throat> so the Warhammer, well, he could actually move, right? We're, we're said he, he's in this hex right here. Well, he's actually, okay, whatever. Uh, so, one, two, three, and blast away uh, at the uh, Jenner. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, last turn, I should have uh, signified that the Jenner is stopped. So, he, he moved up here and stopped. So, uh, that should be noted. He's not moving at the time of this next turn. Um, so, getting into the range is going to be an automatic hit, horrible effect on the... <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. Poor little Jenner. Um... Yeah, let's just move the Warhammer. All right. Okay, so marking orders. Uh, this guy is going to be marked to move. And the uh, Marauder can't do it over here. Can't do anything. Uh, the Valkyrie is burning. Destroyed. Pile of a massive debris. And uh, that is all. So no, um, in, in its activation, let's be clear, when the Jenner activates, it will then fire before it moves. But right at this moment, it is not moving, as we said. So Warhammer moves. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, is it four or is it three? I'm on a Mexican radio. It's a, it's a move of four. Um, so, uh, ay, 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 ay. So, this begs the question, um, yeah, no, this is... This is what happens. Does the Jenner move? I mean, everything moves and then shoots. I think I just made a mistake. Uh, in this, in the, uh, and, and hence the reason for that list, right? And here again, we are talking about a potential understanding how the game is played. Everybody has the same discussion, right? You mark orders, right? Uh, everybody moves, and then shooting happens. Or, uh, the active player moves, and then combat happens for any hold fires of the opponent, of which there are none, because he's marked to move. Right? So, is it everybody moving? 
and then shooting with the advantage going to the initiative holder. The initiative holder fires first. Or do you, as the initiative uh, owner, uh, winner, do you move and take any damage from any hold fires, but then you get to shoot? I believe that the interpretation has always been that if there are no hold fires in the opponent, nothing is on hold, uh, then you just, you fire. Now, I'm going to do it, and then probably find out that's wrong. <laughs> okay, oops, turn number three. So we'll, we'll find out. I, mean, I believe that that's, that's the case. So, well, obviously. Um, the, uh, the Warhammer is going to completely destroy that uh, Jenner. I mean, is there a is there a, a point in even uh, uh, rolling the die because it's an automatic hit? Yes, there is a point. Why? Because he's moved. And um, but he at this point is stationary. So as we said before, it's only when both are moving uh, is that penalty. Uh, I'm sorry. Only when both are stationary does the uh, bonus happen. Otherwise, there is no bonus. So there's just the shot, the shooting. Okay? Make that clear. Only when non-moving fires on non-moving is there a bonus of the non-moving situation. But in any case, one of them moving, there's no bonus. Just take it as it is. So, it's an automatic hit, and that's a PPC, um, heavy, heavy to heavy, heavy to medium, heavy to light, and there's two of them. So, the damage occurs immediately, both PPCs. It's going to be ugly. All right. Blue is damage to the armor. Red is damage to the movement. Uh, there are two hits in armor. Of the quantity that the Jenner can take. Oh, does it have ability to resist by saving throws? Yes, because that's where we're using saving throws. Uh, so we will take two of those away if the roll is red. I need to leave that out there. Radio. Okay. So we're looking for reds. And only one. So. Uh, who makes the choice now, right? We don't know. Uh, firer or target? Red is firer. Red. So, uh, we'll take away a movement. All right. Um, two hits of the four capable of the, I'm sorry, of the two capable, um, it's now um, without any armor. And it basically uh, blows up. He's reduced to uh, moving one hex. And he's, all his armor is basically gone. So, with all the armor gone, uh, the two hits basically destroy the mega. So, this guy is wham, destroyed. And I'll get my smoke and smoke in as well. Okay, we're learning. 
funny, isn't it? Designer of the game is learning. That's what it takes. All right, we'll come back. Admittedly, um, what makes the game fun is the speed at which, or the lack of uh, encumbrance that is put upon players. Um, when the emphasis is on uh, playing, just just play, right? Have fun moving the machines around the game table and, and blowing stuff up. <laughs> I mean, because that's really what it comes down to. And the more stuff you have in the game table, the more complicated it can be and how, uh, how much longer it can take. Um, and if you uh, consider that this entire concept uh, originated uh, from not just the years gone by of work by the people at FASA and, and everything else that came about for Battletech and the guys at CAV and everybody who was involved in publishing all these great, you know, uh, books and everything about this, this uh, universe, uh, this, this game system. Uh, the, uh, the Hex Command Mechanized, um, essentially uh, focused on World War II, is a multi-arm uh, uh, game. It's supposed to be land, sea, and air, if you will. It's supposed to be infantry armor vehicles and, and any kind of aerial uh, combat that you wish to put in. Uh, we rarely do aerial combat. Uh, but it's completely conceivable uh, to have it in, uh, in, uh, engaged, in, involved in the game. It's completely conceivable. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the vehicles just move awfully fast. And they're coming in very quickly and doing their thing and then, uh, you know, getting out before uh, something, somebody locks on a uh, heat-seeking missile or something on them. And by the way, it should be noted that uh, both mechs and cavs, when it comes to anti-aircraft, are uh, there's some discussion as to what uh, mechs can do that. Um, for instance, uh, you can have a laser and uh, or a pulse beam weapon. Uh, and so the question is, do we know enough about energy? I mean, do we really, in, in today's terms, 2023, fall of 2023, do we have uh, any uh, awareness uh, of beam weapons on aircraft? Do we have any evidence, stories, uh, documentation uh, of testing and so on, and exactly how this kind of thing uh, can happen. Well, uh, the civilian population doesn't, but I'm sure the military obviously has been testing all this stuff for a long time because it's, you know, it's, it's probably going to be the future. Beam weapons on the ground for one thing, and then beam weapons in the air for another. And uh, there's been some discussion about how exactly, how long does it take for a beam of energy striking an object in the air uh, to affect it? How does it affect it? What kind of energy is it? You see, so these kinds of things we, we have. Uh, we have to guess, postulate how these things work. And we do have uh, aerospace fighters that can come into the game as well as infantry and armored vehicles on the ground. So you can imagine that our Valkyrie and our Jenner that are smoking, having destroyed each other or whatever, uh, the Warhammer took out the Jenner uh, because it's just completely outclassed. Uh, you know, the, these things are they're going to happen. They're going to have to be introduced, I suppose. Otherwise, it's just, you know... It's just tank versus tank every game. Do you want to be involved in a game that is just tanks versus tanks all the time? 
I mean, I mean, you have to, you know, can you, do you want infantry and, and other things to happen? Do you want a combined arms game? Can you have the uh, potential? Well, yeah, at least at the minimum, have the potential for a combined arms game. Have, have the infantry squads and the ground vehicles and anti-aircraft vehicles, have them ready. And, and the aerospace fighters. Uh, have them ready to be put in the game. If the scenario can, needs to be tweaked at the last minute, you want to throw in an aerospace fighter, go ahead. See what happens. Because if there's no anti-aircraft fire, if there's no anti-aircraft missiles or anything that can chase that plane away, then, um, you know, he's going to be coming around again. You know, come in, do a thing, and then try and get away. Uh, and then come back. He may make multiple runs. Because uh, if your beam weapons can't get him, uh, then he'll just have field it. The air superiority. He'll just keep, you know, coming back. You can have your own aerospace fighters. You can put them in to get him. Okay, so now you have an aerospace fighter combat duel, which would be interesting. We haven't actually got to that point. We've only ever had just one side enter in an aerospace fighter. But now that I think about it, uh, we're going to need to have a demonstration of two aerospace fighters going at it. Because that's like aerial combat rules. Right? Uh, Hex Command Raptors stuff. So, that's where we are. So this is turn, actually, is this turn three now? Yeah, because the uh, Marauder can't do anything. So let's go to turn four. And in the turn four universe. Uh, what happens? We roll for initiative. Uh, we'll take this away, because that's expired. Rolling for the Warhammer's side to see if, well, we'll talk about reinforcements coming in. Uh, you roll the six. And the Marauder side also rolled a six. That's very interesting. Let's do them both at once. Um... Warhammer is going to be yellow. Marauder is going to be green. And the Marauder gets it. That is very good for him. So, why? Uh, well, it's obviously a duel. Take a side. Okay. Um, interesting. So, the orders would be... Forget about any arriving units. Um... Uh, the orders for that marauder would be to probably right he stands still that's a, that, that's a good question what if he just tries to get down that road and take that objective it's going to be really iffy because uh, it's almost like a one-to-one -one. they both got powerful weaponry the difference is that the uh, Warhammer has missiles and the Marauder does not. The Marauder has a gun on top of his head. So... But if the Marauder is, oh, if the Warhammer is ordered to not move, he will get a hold fire shot before the activated player do anything. Um, the activated player's status right now is looking at three if we follow the intended rules without any options. He's looking at three defense hits before he drops, I'm sorry, he has one more armor hit before he drops to the next weight class, which would be medium. Uh, and he will suffer one, at that point, he will then suffer one weapon hit and a move hit. 
Uh, they already have the objective. They've got the objective one already. The question is being able to get that Warhammer out of the situation so he can get this objective is another good question. It's unlikely that he's going to, on a one-to-one -one situation, it's unlikely. So in other words, you could call this game and say it's a draw. And because of the damage caused to the uh, Marauder, you know, Warhammer gets points or something like that. When you call a game, when, you, when the game is over, uh, you have to adjudicate uh, points. So if they both get a point, just, you know, it doesn't have to be increments of numbers, just a single, okay? A point there and a point there. So this side has a point, that side has a point. Uh, and the only difference is they both lost light mechs. Uh, there's no other, I mean, there's other parameters you could talk about when you want to make a decision like that. But uh, just the fact that there's hits caused, you could say, okay, it's like a quarter point. So, you know. <coughs> So, every hit's a quarter point, just so you have some kind of measure. All right, so that's it. Uh, the Marauders' uh, orders are going to be to, well, if he goes across the river, there's a chance of bogging, but we don't know. It's a chance. Uh, does, he, does he want to get closer? Probably not. I would say the Marauder's not going to move. They're going to just duke it out, right? Staring each other down the street of the western town. Marauder fire, our Warhammer fires first. Um, no, no, it, sorry, my mistake. This was the reason for this, uh, for this episode, was to demonstrate. They're both on hold. Now they both get that bonus. And the, uh, sorry. I guess who gets to fire first is the initiative winner, in this case, uh, because they're both on hold. So, uh, measuring, let's do, because he's got no rockets, let's do uh, one, two, three, four, automatic, two, three, four, color, next band is code, goes to color because they're not moving. No other modifiers. Uh, looks like color. So we're going to, because the weapons are identical, we can fire them both at once. Let's take two those two PPCs. Looking for color. And they both missed, and there's no other mods. Let's take his uh, Marauder, Marauder, Marauder. Uh, medium lasers. In other words, he's going to fire everything. Looking for color. Odds. Uh, only one hit with a system management hit. And let's do the AC5. For color. Got it. Okay. So only uh, one hit and a system management hit on the Marauder. So let's roll for the one hit on the medium. I'm sorry, was that the AC? Yeah, that was the AC5. So the AC5 just uh, opened up on the Marauder, on the Warhammer, sorry. Now we're going for damage. Uh, it's heavy to heavy, so it's one damage dice. Uh, da, 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 or is that that's an AC five and not an AC ten? That's actually a medium gun firing to a heavy. Uh, what's the weight of that gun? Actually, it is heavy. Okay, so straight up damage, heavy to heavy. Only one. It is a combat hit. So a combat hit and the system management hit is a D6. That's a D8. Six. Torso jammed. No. 
it's not going to make any difference. No significant damage was caused to the Warhammer, so he's going to fire back. Those two big piece PCs, yeah. All right, looking for color. Uh, one on the system management hit and one miss. Let's do the short range heavy missiles. There's six of them. Let's see how many hit the target. It's direct fire. Uh, blue is one quarter. So two rockets hit. And the saving roll. It's going to be red. Uh, heavy to heavy is one dice each. Saving rolls. Yes, no saving rolls. Okay, so one system management hit. He's eight. This is a damage on the Marauder. And it's a one, which unfortunately is agility or random fire weapon. Uh... Agility would help it going across that river, so we don't, uh, it's our choice, or is it? No, it's not our choice. We roll to see what it actually is. There's two options in that agility, or in that uh, uh, system management hit number one, there's two options. Either you're minus agility, or you suffer a random firing weapon. Uh, in other words, when you go to fire a weapon, you roll to see uh, uh, which ones can fire, I should say. You roll to see which one doesn't fire. Uh, so let's roll for the either the agility or it's just simply 50-50. So red is going to be for the roll to fire random weapon. So blue happens and hits minus one to the agility. Okay, so minus one to the agility. Um... And that reminds me now, we do not have a representative marker for a hit to the agility. So what we'll do in this case, uh, we could have a marker on the table, but what we'll do is we'll just take that minus one to the agility on the um, card itself. We will actually physically mark the card, which means that the cards do serve a purpose. So we'll take the Marauder's card and we'll just cross out that agility. So it's clear he, he has no agility. Okay, so that's it for the turn. Uh, no other modifiers. It's just, you know, they're going to pummel each other until something is decided. Let's come back for turn five.